All right, good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. Wall Street Jesus here. Saturday sweep series. Uh, a lot to talk about today. I'm hoping to get uh, through the majority of it. We had a very interesting week, to say the least. Uh, we spoke a little bit about last week how we are heading into an interesting time of year. Um, and sometimes they get started a bit early, uh, but Usually around mid-August, um, it's on my mind, full-fledged, uh, that we're heading into September. You know, a lot of times people think October is rough, uh, and yeah, the start of October usually is rough, but most of the time I look at uh, October being a month where major bottoms uh, are formed. So I would say mid to late August into September are usually, uh, and you guys know me, I'm full-fledged bull, you guys know that, so, uh, but that's the one time a year where the uh, market could get a little jittery and at the least um, some extreme volatility. Now that ultimately can create some uh, huge opportunities, you know, w without that, I mean some of the biggest rallies have come out of the September poll. Okay, um, so if you have the patience uh, to sit tight, allow things to set up, you know, take it nice and easy, uh, eventually that's where a lot of money can be made. So we'll talk a little bit about that and what we saw this week. Um, also, some of the flow, interesting flow out there. Uh, you know, we'll talk maybe a handful of names, if that, that have seen uh, what I would quote unquote sharp activity. Uh, the rest has just been you know, people shooting for a bounce, oversold names, stuff like that, uh, names with earnings. So we'll go over uh, some of that stuff and then I'll leave time for your names. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get the same old names over and over and over again uh, that have seen flow you know, almost every day seemingly. But uh, we'll go over some of your names and see how they, uh, how they look going into uh, next week. All right. Uh, first things first, before I even forget, because I have a tendency to forget, um, the Sang Lucci gang and Lucci, obviously, they're throwing out this master course. Uh, let me put the link, because that's probably the best thing. Uh, if you guys have any interest, hold on, in finding out a little more information. Oops, here we go. All right, and if you have any questions, you can hit Lucci up uh, on Twitter or send an email to Seth at uh, If you have any questions at all, you know, feel free to sh you know shoot questions over. But um, it's a major course here, and uh, you got the wise guys revealed. Basically, it's a lot of what Lucci puts together um, with the stuff I look at, with flow included. But you know, he does a lot of other stuff that I really don't get involved in. I'm basically just a long-only player, as a lot of you know. Um, Lucci, you know, a lot of times he'll sell puts in a name. He'll sell calls in a name. He's got quite a few strategies up his sleeves. Uh, so this is the whole ball of wax. Uh, there's a lot of material in here. So, again, you can click on that link or uh, hit Lucci up if you're looking for more information about this, okay? Um, as far as any information at all on anything we talk about, you go to WallStreetJesus.com. Um, easy to remember, obviously. Wall Street Jesus, ST Street, not Street. I got that last week quite a few times. Uh, I'll throw that in here too. And basically, you know, anything you need to know as far as uh, what we look at on a day-to-day -day basis, strategy-wise, how we use it, and stuff like that. Um, you can find it all here. We have, hang on, let me shoot this out. If you go at the top here to strategy section, uh, there's a couple of you know, short blogs, so it won't take long to read through some of these things. Um, how to use this information as a powerful intraday momentum indicator, um, how to gauge smart money sentiment off the flow, uh, you know, sweep. Maybe a lot of you aren't familiar with the term sweep uh, and the order. You can get some information there. A lot of the stuff you ask yourself, how do you use all this information, basically just the general 
um, explanation of how I've used flow um, as far as in trading and how I've seen others that I've traded with uh, find success using flow. Uh, so you can get a bunch of information there, the strategy section, okay. And let me get this out of the way too um, early on because then the questions just uh, come flying in. Um, if you're interested in the Steam Room, okay, if you're new, 50% uh, off the first month. That's the Saturday Sweep Series. So you get half off that. Then it's 225 every additional month. Uh, and you get access to the room, the webinars. Uh, basically, that's the whole ball of wax, okay? And also private Twitter is included in that membership. Uh, I also got a question, a couple questions regarding private Twitter. If you're looking for just a feel, basically like a trial, um, and try to get a, a feel for the flow and just the flow, we have spun off private Twitter by itself at a more affordable rate. Uh, but again, you just get the flow, basically open interest and stuff like that, no commentary um, and strategy um, ideas and stuff like that. All right? So WallStreetJesus.com, you'll find it all there. If you have any questions, you let me know. All right, let's go into the market week because uh, that's basically what I'm excited to talk about here. Let me move this over. All right. Uh, here's the story. You know, last week we were talking about how we've had a very strong rally out of the last bull, especially in the queues, uh, which everyone seemed to get extremely bearish, okay, in this pull right here. And a lot of the sentiment stuff we look at was all lined up, meaning that uh, the retail crowd uh, wanted no part of these hot tech names. Um, a lot of put action there, a lot of protection there, the most since uh, I think it was around election time in the NASDAQ names. Um, and then we got a breakout out of this little pullback slash consolidation, okay? We saw the flow absolutely explode like it usually does. Uh, a lot of aggressive activity, especially in the high beta names reporting. Okay, uh, if you guys remember, we spoke about when Netflix knocked the ball out of the park with that strong quarter. Uh, they were looking to factor in blowout numbers in all those big high beta names. Okay, they weren't going to wait around and to see um, what Facebook, Amazon, Google, and all of them look like. Uh, they basically wanted to factor in, especially in the options market, um, potentially similar quarters out of the bigger names. Okay, so that's where you get this chase. Uh, that's where you get um, uh, implied volatility exploding on some of the earnings names. Uh, you know, you got the options players trying to factor in all that. So, I mean, after you reach a point, obviously, where these things have exploded enough, uh, you get a little breather. Okay, they run out of gas. I mean, that's just generally how it happens. They okay, can't go up every, every day. It's impossible. Uh, and that's what we've been seeing of late, okay? And not only that, you had some names report, and, you know, they were solid, but they didn't knock the ball out of the park, right? They they were looking to factor in some blowout quarter, but the quarter was solid, but not anything to get severely excited over, okay? So you saw, like, Google, Amazon, after they reported, there was some profit-taking there, okay? And, and for good reason. I mean, there was a nice run up prior. So um, that's expected when something that's not out of the ordinary to the upside um, comes out of earnings. Okay, so now we've reached the point basically where the earnings run up already happened and we're going into a period of time where, like we said, seasonally can get choppy if not, you know, severely volatile at the least, okay? And that's what I think we're going to see over the short term here no matter what, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to be a severe correction, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to get ugly next week or two um, in the markets. If the market was trying to factor in nuclear war with North Korea, we, this market would have got its ass handed to it this week, okay? That's not what's going on. 
I mean, basically what's going on, you have a low VIX, you have volatility at the lowest it's ever been, okay? You have players that have been shorting volatility forever and making a lot of money doing it, okay? And now you have the VIX, which you guys obviously know, had a little momentum, had gathered some steam to the upside, and I think what people are waiting around to see now is how this market, and more importantly, how the volatility markets react when things go against them. We really haven't had that yet, okay? We really haven't had that explosion to the upside in the VIX where people get caught short, you know, where that liquidity gets tested. And I think that's the concern right now, even more so than North Korea, all right? North Korea's going to add to the element, you know what I mean? It, it lit the fuse pretty much. Um, but again, seasonally, this is a, a lot of times we see this, they come any reason can be used for an excuse. And um, a lot of people are in a wait and see mode now to see if this VIX and volatility products can gather some steam to the upside, you know, what's the liquidity going to look like in these things? So I think that's where we're at right now. And the one promising thing, I will say, okay, is that now more than ever, and you guys heard me mention this in the past, in the options market, people get bearish, and not necessarily bearish, but people scramble for protection on any little hiccup there is in the marketplace, okay? When I got into the game, and the late 90s, like a lot of people compare this to the late 90s, you couldn't find a guy bearish and putting his money where his mouth is bearish for the life of you, okay? It was almost impossible to find some bearish sentiment. And now I've realized that, you know, you get a move 1%, 2% off the highs, and you got people trying to factor in Armageddon out there, okay? So at the least, the way I look at that is that there are going to be those squeeze opportunities, even if this market does trend lower into September from here. I think you're going to get some opportunities on the squeeze side. Okay. Now, everybody, all, a lot of, I run into traders a lot of times that all, automatically they'll translate that into new highs, okay? And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we can get probably something like this where you get that heavy selling and then they squeeze them. You know what I mean? They, they squeeze them a bit then. Then you get some selling again. Uh, people get all lathered up in protection thinking it's the big one again. And then you get a squeeze. And then, listen, ultimately what comes at the end of that, we don't know until we get there, right? I mean, there's no way of knowing that until we get there. Just like we don't know if we're going to come out of this consolidation and have a, a strong push to the upside until we get here. You know, what's the flow look like in this rally? Are they aggressively buying into this rally? And you're not going to get the answers to those questions unless you're there. So we obviously it would be ideal if we could look ahead. But, you know, you don't want to find yourself in the position to try to predict what's going to happen in the future because that's the most difficult part in this game. It's impossible to do. When you do it, you get lucky. The name of the game, okay, and you can ask any trader who trades professionally, the name of the game is to basically find an edge that just bumps the odds in your favor just a little bit. The more, the merrier, okay? So, uh, we were talking about this in the in the steam room, okay? If it's 50-50, right? A 50-50 probability that we had higher or lower out of this spot here. If retail car is extremely bearish, okay, and they're heavily leaning on the put side, so they're factoring in, they're looking at it as, basically an 80-20% chance we're going lower, okay? 
that sentiment can increase the odds maybe to 60 40 in your favor that we're heading north if that makes any sense i could probably have explained it a little bit better all right so that's what i want you guys to understand is all the stuff the flow the sentiment the stuff i look at i'm not looking for it to predict anything for me you know i'm just looking for it to give me that small edge that increases the odds in my favor because i know if I consistently manage my money properly, okay, and I stick to my rules, I'm going to make money more than I'm not over the long run. Okay, that doesn't mean, again, understand what I'm saying. It doesn't mean I'm going to have 9 out of 10 winners. It means that I'm going to win more than I lose based off my signals. Okay, so, and, and that's basically how I approach um, everything I look at in this market. So, that's, I think, the opportunity here, and we're seeing kind of that. If you can see on the bottom, this is Thinkorswim um, that I have up here today. Thinkorswim's got a couple put the calls you can look at, and right here on the bottom, you can see we're pretty elevated. Let me blow this up a little bit, okay? So, we're up here now, okay, here uh, around the election time, okay, this is November, we're pretty much near the same spot here. So that tells me not that the market can go lower next week, okay, or Monday, let's say, but that weakness should be looked at as an opportunity to get long. That's how I would approach that. Okay, and then my added, I mean, my bread and butter, basically, this is added to the flow. I want to see buying into that weakness to tell me that, you know, the professionals out there, the people who know a lot more than you and I about what's going on in the world, is aggressively playing on that same side. Okay, so that's... That's what I would be looking for when I get signals off the sentiment stuff I look at. All right, and we'll talk about um, what type of buying we saw uh, at the end of the last week. Um, Friday, we saw a little bit of buying. Thursday, we didn't see much at all. I mean, Thursday, you know, again, it was the first day of selling, but we didn't see much buying at all. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. But, again, that's the game plan um, going in to late August, September, okay? I think we, honestly, my personal opinion, I think we could chop around. I think North Korea maybe gets brushed off, and then probably something in September triggers maybe a, a scarier moment, per se, where they catch people off guard. What I mean by off guard, <clears throat> traders aren't well protected, right? Right now, they are well protected. We see that. Okay? We see that in VIX. Everybody's buying VIX. Everybody's buying puts right now. Okay? So maybe in September, they may catch them off guard. Now, there is a chance there could be just that additional selling that comes even with these signals. Uh, like, for example, um, 2011 was the last time I saw... All the sentiment stuff I look at, okay, more more on the short term than the intermediate term, but all the short term sentiment stuff that would signal a squeeze that I look at got run over. That was 2011, and if you were around trading in 2011, that was the government shutdown nonsense. You guys remember that by chance? You remember that government shutdown 2011 debacle? So um, that was the last time I remember seeing, again, the shorter term, put the call, retail, put the call, all that stuff I look at, give me a green signal, meaning everybody is extremely bearish over the short term, everybody's leaning on the put side, and there was no solid squeeze off of it. 
if I remember correctly, I think it was just the market leveled out, there was no squeeze, and then just another waterfall lower. But then ultimately, it set up, you know, a major bottom, and three months later, you know, the market took off. So that can happen, all right? And, you know, we were talking, if uh, a lot of members are in here now, we were talking last week that the way to avoid that, okay, the way to avoid that is to relax. In other words, if this day here, for example, which it was, you get some green sentiment signals there, okay, and your signals are telling you to play for a squeeze. Let's, let's just take on spies or Q or ES, all right? That doesn't mean go balls deep all in at one level one afternoon okay so if you're wrong you get mangled you know, that means put on a trade if you were sitting in cash waiting for that you put on a trade okay you catch that squeeze you got a decent profit there you take off some risk yeah we talked a little bit about this last week okay so if you're wrong and ultimately you get run over what is it it's just a loser okay it's one loser and then at lower levels, you'll be able to look around again and see what the flow is telling you, see what they're buying, see what the sentiment looks like, and have a clean slate. I think a lot of traders run into the problem, and it's never on the downside, by the way, okay? Because on the downside, they would get away with it a lot of times. It's always on the upside. So traders, you know, they get bullish, and then what do they do? On a day like this, they buy some Baba, some Amazon, some Facebook, and they think this market's going to rip and they're going to make a killing off five positions they just opened up on the call side. And then they get caught in the wash and that's it. You know, all at one level. And they they have no cash on the sidelines looking to buy a dip. You know, they bought it all in one spot. And that's, you know, you don't want to do that, especially on the upside. But on the downside, that would be the way to avoid, you know, getting run over and having it hurt and sting. You, you can't be afraid of a loser, especially you options guys. You know, options, you're going to have losers. I mean, let's be honest. Options is a tough game. All right? And if you're looking for just a trade in the option game, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to buy weakness when your signals are there. You shouldn't be afraid of that. If anything, you know, the risk is, we talk about this all the time, the risk up here was higher then of you getting caught than it is down here. You may not think it is because now you turn on the television and talk about North Korea every day and traders are bearish, but there was a lot more risk up here. You know, we spoke about that last week. You know, when you got names up every single day and you can't find anything new to buy because Baba already caught 662 sweepers and the stock already has moved, or JD, or Micron, or any of them, you know, there's more risk there. So anyway, that's, that's I think, the roadmap, the game plan, if you're a trader, okay, again, you got to you got to you got to understand what type of player you are in this game ahead of time. You can't do it on the fly. Okay? If you can't buy weakness, if you can't buy into this sell off and sell into a squeeze 2 days later for a profit, if that's not enough for you or you can't be that nimble per se, you should be on the sidelines then. Okay, you should be on the sidelines right now. So you got to understand what type of player you are. You know what I mean? You have to understand that, I mean, before you start pushing buttons, different rules apply to different guys out there. If you're trading trends, you know, you may still be long this market, but you've been long forever. If you're an investor, you're waiting for a decent pullback here, right? And you're looking to tuck, tuck away some names that are a lot cheaper than where they were, a little longer term. 
if you're day trading like myself, you know, you're looking for days of weakness as an opportunity every day. So not everything applies to everybody else, but you know, it's a good idea to know what type of market we're in. Okay, you're never going to know exactly, but what type of climate we, we may be in because it may not be suitable for what you're looking for. And, and, and that's another issue I think a lot of people were having just recently where, yeah, you look at a name like Baba, okay? And uh, we, I know it, it, it gets repetitive, but we were talking about this last week on this webinar. If you were playing the grind till earnings, okay, there may still be some grind this week up to numbers, but you pretty much got it, okay? We were talking that the last pullback, that was the play. Now, if you want to start buying up here, and hoping Baba goes to 180 next month. I mean, that's just being foolish. Is it possible? Anything's possible, right? They have a great quarter. Of course, it's possible if you're holding through earnings. But you know, that's that's just something you don't want to do as a trader. And a lot of you guys, um, especially on the option end, you're looking to buy calls. You usually a lot of you are playing weeklies. A lot of you are playing two weeks out. And you're looking to catch a big move after something has already exploded. You know, the JD is is another one. And in, I mean, it still may head higher into the number. God only knows. But, you know, that play, in my eyes, is, is over. So we're looking for a new, out of this consolidation slash pullback, okay, if we do get it, we're looking for new setups. That's what we're looking for, okay? And if you're that type of player where you want to catch a move like this over the course of a month or two, you have to be patient and let things set up. I think right now, this type of environment that we may be heading in, if not in already, I think is for the trader who can be nimble. And then eventually if we come in a decent amount, then... You know, the traders, uh, I should say, slash investors who are looking to tuck away some things a little longer term could come in and start picking up some cheap pieces. But we, this is hardly a pullback yet, you know? It's hardly a pullback. So I just, I wanted to start off with that um, uh, just to get an idea, because again, it doesn't fit every single one of us trade invest a different way. And you'll hear a lot of people on Twitter throw out a rule book and rules, and people think it applies to everybody. It doesn't. But it's a good idea to know what type of climate we may be heading in and, you know, what's the playbook for it. If the playbook doesn't suit you, your style, your risk measures, your account size, then allow the market to set up an opportunity that suits you. You don't have to short. If you haven't had success shorting, you don't have to short. You sit, be patient, and allow things to set up. When I couldn't be, I told you guys this, when I couldn't be as nimble as I am now, obviously, but when I had to build positions for clients, and I couldn't just get in and out of them when I wanted them, it wasn't that easy. In the, when we were heading into this time seasonally and the market was a little jittery, I would look, my job going into August, I told you guys this last week, would be to get light as a feather right now. Light as a feather. If I felt uncomfortable, unsure about what was going on, you know, the stuff I look at doesn't make me feel as confident, I would sit tight and allow the market to set up. So, you know, that's that's not a bad option. But you don't need to short if you haven't had success. Because if you think they're going to make it easy on the shorts, you're nuts. 
Yeah, they're probably you no. Know, and as a short-term trader, not to bounce around, but I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Maybe I'm not explaining it well. If you can be nimble, I think that's where the opportunity is. Okay, because when people get all buried up on the put side, they're gonna squeeze the living shit out of them. You know, we already kind of saw in tech Friday some decent squeezes. So I think the weakness when we see elevated bearishness as a, <clears throat> a short-term trader <clears throat> can be an opportunity. All right, now quickly let me just write off some names because there's not a lot of action that's getting me excited out there. All right, hold on one second. <clears throat> there's not a lot of action that's getting me excited out there. And what I mean by that, you guys know that I like um, to see them get aggressive in a name, names, sector. <clears throat> Here was the action on Friday, some of the top action out there. And Friday was incredible compared to Thursday as far as the buying was concerned. And it wasn't even that special. Okay, but there was some buying. But you guys probably heard, like, for example, this Procter Gamble. Okay. Yeah, the flow there has been aggressive. The flow there has been impressive. The problem is the stock has rallied. Okay, and that's been the problem with a lot of these things. That's what happens when you have a rally like we did. Okay, but just to give you an example, this, the flow in PG, you know, is special, is different. It's not just one call buyer. They're tripping over themselves to own Procter & Gamble calls. It's not a common thing. So it tells you somebody's extremely bullish on this thing. All right, other than that, I really don't have another name. You know, we saw um, the action, as you guys know, in that COL. That was solid activity. There was a sharp call buyer. We spoke about this, I think, last week anyway. Okay, but that's, that's gone now. Gone. Now it's in the hands of the, the M&A gods. You don't have an edge in the flow anymore right now. You know, you're looking, if you were in, looking to take advantage of the, the cushion you have, maybe get some lucky with news. We spoke about that charter. And I know a lot of you mentioned um, it wasn't as much as you were hoping or expecting, but I think that's irrelevant. <laughs> Sometimes the market doesn't give, a lot of times the market doesn't give what you expect. But basically now, it's all out there now. It's all out there. It was even already out there, to be quite honest with you, when they started buying this breather. But, you know, it was probably still worth a play because they were pretty aggressive in size. And then they got news now, right? Faber broke the story here, popped to 409. So that's it now. You know, now you're looking to hold on um, to September's or Jan's or you rolled out or whatever. That's all fine and dandy, but the edge off the flow is gone. And as far as anything else right now that I, I'm seeing, I, I'm not. There's nothing much to be excited about. The flow actually took a turn for the worse, which is only one day, but we saw put sweepers get aggressive Thursday. Um, but I think it's more of a lot of things have rallied because we've had a rally. Uh, you guys heard me mention a couple times, uh, they still have earnings. Um, this was one of the better names out there, retail names, catching action. Um, you know, the one, the one knock on it was that it caught earnings. I think it's at the end of the month. You know, grind from 24, it got up to 28 and change, little pause here. But now, you know, you're getting close to earnings now. 
You know, all the tech names, I don't even want to go through them. Yeah, we already know the story there. You know, we already know the story there. You know, that we had um we had some shorter term trades, uh, like for example, uh, Facebook. You had this little breather here. Not, again, the not initial activity. This thing already already has rallied hard. We know the Facebook story, but for a trade, you had a little breather. Okay, and it worked out perfect that into weakness, there were a pair of September sweepers, two good looking sweepers in Facebook on that day. Then it caught a little more flow after that, and you had a little lift here. Now, if you were playing for another move like this, uh, you're kind of stuck right now, right? You're right back to where you started. But if you were looking for just a trade, you got it. Honestly, I play Facebook. I day trade anyhow, so a lot of these winners I miss out on anyway. But I day traded Facebook. It was a nice trade for me that day off the action because it went from red to green. But, yeah, you got that little lift. And now the market rolled over, and Facebook's going to roll over with it. And if same thing here. We didn't, but if you see a good-looking order or two come into Facebook, into this poll, you have a trade. So that's the difference in, in, in the two flows right now. You know, you got, again, these names that have been uh, solid performers. You guys remember I was talking about Netflix. I was hoping uh, for something like that in Netflix here into this, and, and they never came. They still haven't come in this Netflix. And they usually come. Maybe it was a sign of, of the things to come, you know? Uh, but the same thing, you know, if you saw a Netflix sweep come into this breather here, you know, you're looking to get a trade out of it. And the same thing applies here. You know, even better that it's cheaper. So, and Friday here was the, um, the order flow. We could go over it quickly. Um, NCLH, they do this every time. I mean, this was just one of the orders. Um, between this and Skechers, these were the two best uh, order flow on the day, Skechers and NCLH. That's Norwegian Cruise Line. They've been playing the dip there uh, for quite a while now. Uh, they had a secondary. They literally have bought every single dip. Um, they actually, into this breather here, if you guys remember, uh, they were a bit early. It might have come like right here somewhere. Uh, there was a bullish risk reversal. Pretty good looking order there. Uh, and then she came out and, you know, got to a high of 61 and a half. So they played this um, into this pullback here. So, again, this is nothing new. Okay, they've been solid in it. They buy pullbacks. But, I mean, one of these times I wouldn't be surprised NCLH bounces a bit. And if the market rolls over, it's going to come down with it. You know, this is not initial activity. So, again, solid flow for the day. It was worth a day trade even though I didn't play it, which I'm kind of embarrassed not to, uh, to admit. A lot of the guys in the room played it. Uh, the reason I didn't play it is because I don't want to get into the details, but it, it, it was coming off a rally. In other words, it didn't come in off a breather or some weakness. The stock already bounced nicely off the lows, and then the action came in, and the stocks, you know, continued higher throughout the day. So it made a nice day trade. And again, you know, if you got in at that level where the action was and you're looking to swing it for a couple days and lock it in, you know, that sort of thing. Or if you like this Norwegian cruise line and you're looking on something on your end, you know, that looks extremely bullish and you're using the flow as confirmation, that's fine. But off the order flow itself, you know, this is this is nothing new. This is nothing new. They added a little on that weakness. All right, what else do we have? Um, okay. Oh, the sketches. That's one of the... Um, 
new names to see some decent action. Uh, let me go to the daily here. You guys probably remember me mentioning Skechers um, about a month ago. Or so, so here's what happened: Skechers, off this poll, they started aggressively coming after calls back here. Okay, and throughout this whole push higher, there was Skechers call buying. Literally, every couple of days there was Skechers call buying. Okay. Finally topped out, the flow went quiet, the stock went into a little consolidation, and the last couple of days they've showed up again, uh, Friday being the latest day. So you got some bullish activity back into the sketches and it looks pretty good. You know, aside from some of the tech names that have run like Banshees, you know, the semiconductors and stuff like that, yeah, this has been uh, a retail, retail name that has outperformed the sector. A lot of the names in the sector look like crap. But, yeah, she looks good. She looks good. Uh, usually not a quick mover, but has been um, a decent trade off wise guy activity, too. Uh, so that and the Norwegian cruise line was the best flow on the day. Uh, here's one there's, uh, they're looking for just a trade, X-Ray. Um, I actually traded this one Friday. Uh, a little market pull kind of got in the way, but still, uh, look at this debacle. All right, so they're looking, obviously, for some sort of dead cap bounce here. Bloodbath, new lows, Friday, and then into the weakness. Uh, they come in, sweep up some calls for next week. Where is this thing? Is that? Uh, where's, oh, here. August 55 calls. $176,000 bet, which is a big bet for this name. A little under 55. They paid 75 cents. So August 55s they played. And had um, sort of a grind, I would say. Had a nice push, then the market pulled, kind of created this, and then grinded through uh, the rest of the day. All right, but again, look at the chart, and you can see, I mean, this thing has been down for, what, a month and change? Destroyed. So they're just looking for a bounce. If we see them come back for more, maybe, it, you know, we can get the impression uh, they're looking for a little bit more. Uh, what else? Oh, you know what's another name, too? They're, um, PXD. Uh, this thing can move. This thing got its ass handed, too, too. Energy. So always put that asterisk next to these energy names. Um, got demolished. There was actually some put buying there. Finally bottomed out. There was um, August. I think it was August call buying. And then the next day. They rolled them out for more time. It was actually until weakness the next day. They rolled them out for more time. And then every day since, they've added a little bit more. Um, on Friday, there were some December ads. December 1, I think it was 135s. So they're not afraid to lay some wood there. All right, so they're looking for a little squeeze bounce out of this thing. Um, the majority of the action coming in December, though. So they have some time, uh, some of the new action. Even some Jans, I think. Uh, here's a weird one. E-I-X. Uh, that's Edi um, what's it again? Electric. Edison. E-I-X. So that's unusual activity into this name. This is what the chart looks like. I don't know if you guys are familiar with or have traded this name. Uh, but this was like 25 times normal, uh, no sweeper activity or anything like that, just an unusual uh, block buyer. Uh, came late in the day, so had a move, but really didn't have too much time uh, to do anything more than that. But you could see the reaction towards it. And where is it? here it is. So $100,000 bet, I guess a non-sweeper. 
3.30. August, 80 calls. They paid 40 cents. Uh, and then you had this. VI, Viacom, that's the Class B shares. You had a sweep of 4,000 plus Jan 35s. Decent size, even though Viacom could catch some size. Uh, but look at the, the month. Jan, so they're giving themselves enough time. And that's another thing I'm noticing. Some of the quality um, out there, you know, some of the the goods out there with size, they're coming with time behind them. And it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, if you want to make a real bet and you don't want to be, you know, quick about it, you're going to give yourself ample time to navigate through um, just in case September ends up being choppy, rough, volatile month. All right, let me get to uh, your names. I know I see you guys throwing some names out there already. Hold on. Where do I uh, open this? Here. All right. Um, Jordan's talking about NVIDIA. Uh, Jordan, I don't know um, what to tell you about NVIDIA right now. NVIDIA you know, had to move the run-up until earnings price to perfection, right? Just another one of those names. And it pulled back. Yeah, so, I mean, to get an edge off the flow now, and a lot of people, do, they don't like to be patient, but the only way to get an edge off the flow now is for the NVIDIA flow to go quiet, which I doubt it will, because there's so many hands in it. And then, you know, sweepers to start aggressively coming in, appearing into some consolidation or pullback. Um, you know, right now, it's really a, a tough call. You know, and listen, the other thing too, guys, I, again, if NVIDIA is down, let's say, three bucks Monday, okay, and there's some decent sweeper activity that comes into that, okay, that could be lined up for a quick trade, right? That's what I was talking about earlier. So in other words, you're looking to play a snapback there. But if you're hoping for another huge leg higher at NVIDIA from here, and you think you're going to get it if the market is volatile, choppy, or rolls over, it's not going to happen. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen. So you got other things to worry about now as a position trader or swing trader you know, that you didn't have to worry about when the market was in decent shape. You know, if this market is a mess for the next month, you know, NVIDIA, the likelihood of NVIDIA going anywhere too far is highly doubtful. All right, so really now, like I said, with a lot of these tech names, NVIDIA, I would just let it set up, in my opinion. Um, otherwise, you get a you get a flush. There's some sweeper activity into the flush. You're looking for a quick trade. That's fine. Uh, what else we got? Who's got some good names here? And NBIX. Jim is saying, I don't. Jim, NBIX. That's that biotech. I get that. Oh no, that's. Where did I see this NBIX? It sounds familiar. They caught a bet, right? Is that a biotech? Yeah, it caught some action, right? That's probably why you're asking. Um, I'm not, hold on, Jim, let me pull up the thing. I'm not too familiar uh, with these bios, but we did see some action in this thing. Let's hang on, hold on. And so you had, yeah, November 65s, right there, been out of the money too, $53. I, the only thing I would say, do you know if they have anything, um, an event ahead or FDA shit or something like that? Could be a play on that, you know? That's the only thing to watch out for. Uh, but it does, I, I remember seeing it. It does, it, hey, it looked decent, right? It looked decent, this thing. The only thing you're coming up here, which, you know, you could see up here, up here, up here. I might find some trouble here unless it gets through, so. Um, but again, you could keep an eye on, uh, what you call it, some sweeper activity there. Are you in it already or are you looking to buy it here? I guess that's the question. 
because they already had a uh, pretty decent move. Yeah, worth a watch anyhow. See if sweeper activity comes in. Looks like I'll catch some sweepers from time to time. Uh, Ani saying on an intraday trade like X-Ray, what RR do you look for? It can't be much more than 1-1, one, one, right? Yeah, it, it, again, it depends on the day. I mean, that's a pretty good question, though, Ani, but it depends on the day, okay? If yeah, they're dancing, you know what I mean? Sometimes there's just days where there's um, sweepers are in there, they're busy, and things are popping like popcorn, left and right. Um, you know what I mean? And I'll let things run, or uh, I'll keep my st stop a little tighter and then leave the leash a little longer to the upside. On something like the X-ray uh, that you mentioned, yeah, that's generally that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm willing to give. And here's the thing, Anna. We spoke about this. I don't know if you remember. And I think this applies to swing trading and everything else. On days like Friday, when there's nothing really, when the flow's not really exciting me too much, there was some bull flow, but nothing really exciting me that much. You know what I mean? I wasn't doing cartwheels over the buying that was coming in. I'm just looking to keep myself entertained, but more importantly, not get hit over the head. If I happen to come out of a day like Friday and make a little bit of money, you know what I mean? I, I'm not going to pop a bottle of champagne over trading this X-ray. You know, basically, my trading looks like this. I play an X-ray. Yeah, I lock in 35 cents. I play another name. I lose 25 cents. I play another name. I made 40 cents. And then all of a sudden, I step on a doozy, right? I step on an HOG where uh, you got some aggressive sweepers sneaking in. I get in early, and then all of a sudden, a big order comes in with news, and I sell it a stick higher. That's what is going to paint my P&L. You know, so the other stuff is, again, I'm looking to make a little bit of money, but I'm not getting rich, but at the same time, I'm not going to get poor. You know, and the big winners, or I wouldn't even say big, but the, the solid winners make up for all my small losses, scratches, small wins. You know, if all my little small winners and scratches and small losers even themselves out, even then I'm ahead of the game. So I think the same thing applies as a swing trader. You know, there are certain setups, certain periods of time, you know, early stages of a move and a rally where you you are going to get paid, okay? And then there are times, late stages of a rally, you know, choppier times, more volatile times, where you're looking to make a little bit of money, of course, but the most important thing is you don't want to get hit over the head. You understand? So you're keeping yourself entertained because you're a degenerate, and we all are. But you're playing nice and easy that where even if you make money, it's not going to make a dent. But more importantly, if you lose money, it's okay. And those trades, well, if you're managing your risk properly, those trades should even out. Sometimes you're going to make a little more money. Sometimes you're going to lose a little money, you know, but eventually in the long run, they're going to even themselves out. But the solid setups, the high confident plays, you know what I mean? That's what paints your P&L. But the problem is, if you think that, and I'm not saying you, I know you aren't, you know, because I know you a long time now, but I'm saying traders think they can come in every day and find a high confident setup and play. They're nuts, and that's why they find a tough time. And they come in every day thinking, yeah, especially as a swing trader, come in every day thinking you're going to find a, a high probability setup. So, 
that's what um and we were talking to you know in in the room Friday because that's what I think a couple people um have a tough time with. They actually mentioned that's what they have a time a tough time with. You know, they can't sit around and wait and you know, they're looking at the market every day. They love trading, they love the market, but they they don't realize that that's fine, but make sure you you play nice and easy. You know, play really, really small. One or two things are going to happen when you do that, okay? Either one, you're, it's not going to be worth it. So you're going to be like, ah, shit, I'm not even doing this because it's not even worth it, right? Or if it's worth it, you're going you're gonna to look to make a little bit of money. You won't get hit over the head. And then, like I said, you're, the goods are, are, are what paint your P&L. But you got to do something to wait around for the good stuff. You know, you got to do something to wait around the good stuff. Like, and, and I don't know about you guys, okay, but um, that was a problem for me as a swing trader that, you know, I have such a passion for the market that, you know, I come in every day and I knew that this wasn't the time to try to make money as a swing trader. And it was hard for me to sit there and do nothing. And not play. You know? Like, for example, we were talking about, remember this consolidation? Uh, well, the Q is even better. But remember we were talking about, if you look and you're doing things right, the most of your money that you make is going to come the early stages of this move, right? The early stages. Up here is where you're always going to have a problem. You talk to any trader, it's always up here. Sometimes they get away with it, it goes higher, it goes higher, but they always get caught up here somewhere and give back all this money they made over here. That's the problem. So that if you make this money here, okay, and you're more concerned with keeping this money so you're trying to stay as light as you possibly can to keep this money just in case you get caught. And you get caught and you only give a little bit back, you still made a good amount of money. But you can't play the same way the whole way up because eventually it's going to bite you in the ass. You know, even like, again, it doesn't have to be, um, amount of positions, it could be dollar money management, or it could be size management, it could be anything. You know, like I was saying, for me, when I was trading even positions for a client, for clients, I would get most aggressive here, and then like a funnel, you know, my exposure would get less and less and less as the rally got longer in the tooth. I still had to be involved because, especially with clients, a lot of you know, I couldn't be in all cash as the market continued to go higher. I'd get phone calls all day long. But I'd make sure I was light that when I did get caught, I knew I was going to get caught at some point, I still kept a lot of client money, profits. So, but that's, that's I think, um, a a tough thing that traders need to, um, you know, figure out a proper way to navigate through that. You know, and you see the market going up every day. You think you have to participate in it. But, you know, that's another thing we spoke about many times, Honey, You remember, the market may continue to go up, but there will always be that washout that washes out that whole last part of the grind. All the time. Never fails. It's just a matter if you can get out of the way in time. And that's a tough game to play. Uh, what other names we got? Trip. Yeah, there was some lotto buying in that trip. Um, there was some action pre-earnings, um, but forget that stuff. That was earnings stuff. I'm talking about post-earnings. There was some cheap lotto stuff. I don't know. What were they buying? Like 49s. 49s. Yeah, I don't know. What was it? September? Let me see. Did one of them hit the board? They were small and cheap. Let me see. Now, the pre-earning stuff, I don't really uh, pay much attention to. Let's see. Did it hit? Eight, eight. No, this is pre-earning. 
Um, I got to double check, but I think it was the 49s. I'm almost positive the 49s. They might have been September 49s. So you had some buying into that. What were they? September 40s? Oh, you're in the September 40s. Yeah, there was some, um, a little bit of lotto activity in it. Again, Alex, small money, but maybe they're trying to catch some chatter or news or something, you know? Something like that. Uh, Nick is saying, hey, Jesus, what about GoDaddy? Yeah, GoDaddy, I don't think we've seen Flo recently. GoDaddy does catch a buyer here and there, though. Hold on. Let's see. GoDaddy. Wow. Here's the last bet. November 44s. You had a $400,000 block there. Uh, before that, oh, this is back in November. This was um, around the election. And those are Jan 2019 calls. Those were leaps. They're probably still open. That came when the stock was 35. Here you got uh, November 44s back on 718. So that's uh, last month. Why? She's been doing okay, this GoDaddy? Did she report yet? 40. Oh, she must have just reported, or is that just um, coming down with the market? Let me see. Oh, so she reported Nick 88. Yeah, so that's the last bet, Nick, that I've um, that hit the board there. So, yeah, again, the, the pre earnings stuff, I, I always want to see them come back and buy post earnings for me to be uh, a believer. So that's, I haven't seen anything post earnings. Uh, who else we got here? I skipped over a couple of guys. Okay, Ronchero saying, Jay, if Sharpies get long options with time and they are wrong, how can you tell if they roll a position down or down and out? For example, short sure and win. Uh, that's a good kind of question, Ronchero. Usually, I mean, a lot of times if it's decent size, um, we'll see them come out. Okay. Um, otherwise, you know, what happens is, let's say, they roll, for example, so um, we'll see a big order get bought, and then I'll look in the flow, and I'll see that other position closing the initial position, you know. Um, but, again, when they, when they buy in time, with time, okay, especially into a market rally, they usually, that's a starting point. In other words, they want to have exposure to the name, okay, but they know the chances are market could dip or something like that, so they own, they have exposure to the name, and if it comes in, they can add to it, all right? So, like, for example, you're talking about the win here, all right? They, like, this, this stuff doesn't phase them. Like, if they, if they let's say somebody bought Jan calls in this thing, this little poll doesn't phase them. They, because they know when this is over, if this thing is hanging around anywhere, they could come in and add to the position. So, but the thing is, is the best way for you to make a play or something like that is to put in what we talked about this for a couple of weeks, uh, the last few weeks. Put in, if you're making a play on the options, put in what you're willing to risk, okay, at the time. So instead of saying, I'm going to put a stop loss on it, you put in whatever that dollar amount is into those Jan calls, and you wait. You don't have to stress yourself out of being stopped, okay? And if action comes in, let's say at the end of the month or next month, uh, aggressive activity starts to come in and, and to win again, and you want to add at that level then, you can always do that. But, you know, when you're buying a name that's already moved off a ton of action and, you know, they're buying some action on the dip here with time, that's the only way you can mimic that order. There's no there's no other way, in my, in my opinion. You know, unless you're making a play, you're saying, all right, I'm looking to buy it here. I'm going to stop myself out. Um, if it has the wrong direction, I'm going to keep it tight. Maybe I'll get a bounce. But why would you... Why would you be focused on Jan calls if that was the case, you know? 
again, it gets it gets tougher. Um, Ranchero it gets tougher when you're coming off rallies to try to catch another move because the likelihood of a market pause or market pullback obviously has increased after all these things have run so far. You know, so you, you're going to get caught in some sort of consolidation. You, it's just, there's nothing you can do about it. But if, you're, if you play Jans, you're looking to not stress about that. That's why you're playing Jans. So put in what you're willing to risk and leave it there. You understand? If next month, like I said, when they start hitting it up again, maybe it's at lower prices, same prices, whatever the case, you can determine then if you want to add to it or just leave those Jan calls and, and don't stress on them. Otherwise, you're going to stress the living shit out of yourself, you know? The whole point of going out a decent amount of time is not, not to stress and to be able to add, if you so choose, into weakness. Uh, but it is, you know, it does it, it does get tricky there um, when you see some size long-term buying come in. And, um, you know, the, the stock, the market, everything is a bit choppy and uh, there's some selling there. Uh, what else we got? Amazon and BIIB looks like a good play. Thoughts? Uh, BIIB actually caught a bet. Let me see. Again, I don't follow these biotechs too much, but the BIIB, I remember, caught some sort of bit. I don't know what the hell it was. Let's see. Uh, BIIB, September 310s. When was this? This is the end of July? I thought it was after that. End of July. September 310s. Hold on. September 310s, 280. Yeah, I don't know, but that uh, this is back at the end of July, so it looks like this may even be underwater, right? Yeah, right around here. So it looks like it's um, a bit cheaper than where it was when they put the bet on, so you're getting it cheaper. I don't know, you know, I don't know much about these biotechs. I know this is a big guy, but I don't know. They might be playing off a catalyst or something. Uh, Jim is saying, I saw that was an earlier post on the VIX. By the way, there was, you know, we're seeing a lot of buying in VIX. That's evident in the price. Um, you guys probably saw that order. Hold on. Oh, I posted it on Twitter anyway, right? You guys saw that. I called them the gun lock buyer. Hold on. So there was... Um, there's a couple. We saw some interesting bets in uh, UVXY, actually. We were making fun of the guy. Meanwhile, he's laughing to the bank right now. Here is a VXX, June 2018, $25 calls. Now, this doesn't tell us much over the short term. Okay? It really doesn't. As a matter of fact, it may add even more fuel to the fire for a squeeze. Um... You know, you got people tailing on and VIX and so forth. Uh, but this guy's going out, and that's basically Gunlock's play, uh, his can't-lose play. He claims if he goes into 2018, he has enough time that there's going to be some sort of big move higher in volatility. That's his play. So we call this the Gunlock Sweeper. You know, I don't know. All I know is you could have, Jim, I'm kicking myself because, um, again, a, a couple guys in the room had it. Uh, there was momentum off this bet. I don't know if you were around when this bet uh, hit. All of a sudden, the VIX exploded and could have made like 70, 80 cents off VXX. Like this came in right around here. Yeah, 13.30 the VXX was. Um, a little before... 2.30. Uh, Watch this. It was like an explosion there. I don't know if this bet spooked people or what. Watch this. 
And guys, that's what that's what I love to do as a day trader. If any of you guys weren't in the room, um, day trade, yeah, that's I'm looking to take advantage of the momentum that's generated off these orders. Okay, the stronger the activity, the more momentum that comes in. And the ones I have a lot of success with that I was talking about earlier is when I see some small, sneaky sweeper activity start to creep in a name, okay, I get into the name. I'm trading the equity, by the way, but people trade the options. Um, I get in the equity, and then if that name catches bigger activity, bigger buying that comes in that follows, or chatter, or sometimes just even just the momentum of further buying, um, th those are the ones that I end up getting paid on. Yeah, the rest, I'm just looking to trade and enjoy myself. So the VXX, here it is, 226 was, yeah, look, look, see this? That was like a little bit after that bet. Boop, whoosh, like a rocket. So here, yeah, 1330. Exactly right here. That was the pop off the order, Jim. That June bet. And look at this move. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. All right, what other names did I miss? Anybody have any questions on flow or swing trading um, or flow, day trading or flow? Jordan Baidu, same, same can of worms, Jordan. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a wise guy, guys, with these things. I just, I don't, I don't really know. You know, there's not much edge off the flow. Um, the same thing, I think, Baidu, uh, Jordan, if you get some sweepers into weakness and you're looking for that quick snapback type play, yeah. But, you know, now you got Baba earnings. You know, you got other catalysts that basically are going to determine what Baidu does, right? What does the market do? What, uh, as we head into September, you got a number of things here um, where, it's, like I said, it's not a month ago where the market at least was stable and trending higher and things were just, you know, the flow could add momentum and they would just carry higher. Now you got a lot of bulls in here. Uh, hold on. Let me, I want to make sure I get everybody. Sometimes I skip over. I don't want you guys to take that personal. You know what I mean? Hold on. Um, Greg is saying, thank you for just talking, not constantly trying to sell products. <laughs> no problem, Greg. No, I, listen, I, you guys know me. I don't pump shit down. Get through, you know, basically, you know what I do. I'm pretty honest about it. I'm not telling you guys. I'm making 30,000% uh, and I'm flipping long, short, depending on the market. Yeah, it's pretty clear what I do. And, um, you know, this, again, I'm not really trying to push um, that I'm any guru stock picker. You know, it's just, it's intel that I've used throughout my career and, I know traders as well who worked with me around me that have used the same type of information and trade completely differently and have found ways to benefit off the same way. So I'm not really trying to sell me as some guru here. I'm the furthest thing from a guru in this game. There's no such thing as a guru in this game, let's be honest. Uh, Greg says, seeing any decent-looking sweeps and dividend stocks, you know, Greg, here's the thing. We saw, I told you the Procter & Gamble. That had some really nice activity, okay? I mean, here, you guys can see. Like, PG doesn't catch this type of action. Watch. And there were some smaller momentum-type sweepers that aren't even on this board. Um, but they started right here, 721 this day. Okay, and you know, you remember me saying it's not just about one order when they start buying, right? You can see, look, the last order to hit the board in PG was April. Okay, so it went quiet, the flow. And now here on July 21st, again, this is not just one order. 
there were multiple orders that came in. So it's showing an aggressive buyer or the syndicate institution fund, whatever the hell they are. Somebody wants PG calls, okay? Then, you know, they keep coming. 725, they add a little more. 731, they add a little more. 87, they add more. You know, 88, they come back and add more. You know, it's that nonstop action in a name that doesn't catch that type of activity. So that's um, one of the names that they came into. So that was roughly, yeah, right. I mean, it literally started right around here. Okay, but you can see a little bit of a pull, quiet, and then started, um, and that's the only thing, the blemish on it now is because it's come a decent way here, even though the action's been hot, um, yeah, this is not the initial level, but another, the other stuff is the uh, defense names, they pay dividends, don't they? So you had um, the COL, um, which was incredible activity, had that sharp sweeper, but they caught news, as you will aware, okay? And then um, Raytheon has seen some activity come in. RTN. Um, just, what was it, yesterday? Uh, yesterday, sorry, Thursday, into weakness, um, they hit this thing again here. There was a reversal, green to red, um, and into weakness, there was... September, October, Jan buying. So those are the names right now that, that I'm seeing. Otherwise, the flow has been quite across the board. As far as quality, as far as quality. Uh, but the defense names, what's that defense ETF? Uh, there's one, I got my father-in-law. He was asking me about it when Trump took office, and he don't let me live it down. He wanted to buy it. and. I didn't really get on it for him. ITW, was that it? No. I can't think of it. Whatever it is. But they've been on fire. Uh, let's see. NVIDIA we spoke about. Norwegian Jim we spoke about. Stay. I haven't taken a look at it. Stay. So that one rolled over. That had unusual activity. What was it again? September 20s, right? Was it September 20s? September 20s, I think it was. Um, yeah, I mean, it's unusual activity. So they're, they're playing something there, you know? They're playing something. Uh, I think this is more of the market than anything else, this pull. Uh, but I would put it into that unusual activity category. Uh, the hotels have been strong, though. You know, the hotels have been strong. I like that win, but I'm sure they've all come in recently, right? Yeah, win came in. You know, and, and that's the thing to understand too, guys. The market goes south, it's going to take a lot with it. Now, the one good thing, I think, um, another thing we have on our side, that there's already been a correction in a lot of this market. You know what I mean? And a lot of groups got their ass handed to them while tech has been soaring. So we can see some sort of rotation, which softens the blow and gives us some things to look at. Um, but, you know, usually the early part of a pullback, they're going to take down everything with it. Uh, oh, I thought you guys said you looked. ITA, ITA, that's it. ITA. Um, and that's another bad thing. Uh, and, Jordan, this goes to your question. That's another bad thing that earnings season gets in the way of. And you probably heard me bitch about this the last couple of weeks. Excuse my French. But the rotation, like that's one of the biggest advantages at a flow. In other words, what we'll see is we'll see um, tech flow get hot, right? They start sweeping Facebook, Apple, um, Netflix, and you see crazy sweeps one after the other. Um, and they take off, okay? So now tech is hot. All of a sudden, we'll start see them. We'll start seeing the flow now going into, you know, uh, retail names or you know the Procter and Gambles of the world. And all of a sudden, the flow in the tech space has gone quiet. Like there's no more now. Apple there hasn't been a sweep in a couple of days, or 
Facebook, you know, just caught a ton of action the other day. Yeah, not much action. And those are the signs of some, you know, early signs of some rotation going on. And it, it gives you an advantage, right? If you're in tech, maybe you lock some of that pro those profits in and look to take advantage of some of the names that really aren't overextending right now. You know, we saw that in the financials. Um, we saw tech flow get quiet, and then they started buying Citigroup, Bank of America. Okay, so we started seeing signs of rotation into the banks. And then, long behold, C Citigroup went to highs. During earnings season, it's so hard to get a gauge on that because everything is catching flow. Okay? Because, again, the, there's a, um, a lot of stock replacement going on. So... Even though there's coal buying, big block coal buying on, going into earnings, there's a higher probability that's that they're cashing in their equity. And there's been a ton of that, by the way. Players selling stock. So in other words, let's say you got um, 100,000 shares of Citigroup. You sell 100,000 shares of Citigroup, and you buy you know 1,000 October 70 calls. Yeah, that's been a, that's been happening a lot throughout earnings season. So it, it makes it messy. You really can't see the rotation. Um, you know, you really don't know what, what's legitimate call buying, what's not, what's replacing stock. We saw activity into retail. You know, all of a sudden there was an uptick in um, call buying in the retailers uh, just last week. And coincidentally comes right in the heart of earnings season for retail. Yeah, so that raises a red flag. Yeah, it could be if you're short J.C. Penny, and you don't want to lock in that the profits on that short, right? You don't want to cover those shorts. What's the quickest, easiest way to to protect and hedge? You buy calls, buy some cheap calls in J.C. Penny, right? So this way, if they report not so bad numbers or whatever the case, and the stock squeezes, you got the calls protecting that you know so around earnings season events you got them the flow gets messy and it takes away from a lot of um the advantages of flow you know like i said right rotation is one of the main things the main things uh, but when they're when you see call and put buying in everything it's pretty much useless and we've been seeing that this earnings season was a hot mess, right? We were talking about that last week. Flow has been disgusting. And what I mean by disgusting, we see uh, spy put buying. All of a sudden, we started to see some size spy put buying coming in. Okay, now, is that betting against the market? Or, you know, is that protection into earnings season? Who the hell knows? You know, we never know for sure. But when there's an event, there's earnings season, we know the odds of that goes up drastically. So when the flow is like that, you don't want to fool around too much. You know, you hear me use the term sharp. That's what sharp means to me. Sharp means clean cut. Okay, somebody places a bet or series of bets, and it's sharp. That means there's not a doubt in my mind he bought those things for one reason, and that's because he thinks the thing is going to explode. So that's what I mean by when I label something sharp. You know, and, and earnings season makes a big mess out of things. Sometimes not as messy, or sometimes like we saw this earnings season, um, going into earnings season, the flow was pretty clean. It was all bullish and looking good. And then as soon as we started to get close to, um, like, the banks reporting and stuff like that, all of a sudden – you know, put buying started to scramble in and a whole bunch of nonsense. Yeah, so flow exactly is like a map, you know, and you're looking for, you know, patterns of buying. That's generally what you're looking for. If there aren't any, if the flow's not making much sense to you, right, if there's spy call buying and spy put buying, then... There's nothing in flow that's signaling anything. Doesn't, you know, just because it's flow every day doesn't mean it has to tell you something. But when there is, when you see those patterns of call buying, put buying, 
you know, or you start to see a change in the pattern of call and put buying, um, those are the opportunities. You know, so for example, now let's say hypothetically we're going, um, we go into a little so called correction or whatever you want to label it, right? And we see um, flow resemble what we saw Thursday, this past Thursday, where there's just put sweeper action, right? Put sweepers grab the ball and the momentum is lower. The markets are lower, and there's nothing but put sweepers on the board. That's all we're seeing, okay? All of a sudden, that flow changes intraday. Now we start to see some call buying aggressively come in, but the markets are still weak. That's an opportunity, right? That's signaling to myself and the people who watch flow that, all right, now you got some of the smart money aggressively positioning on the other side here. You know, or we'll see, I told you, VXX, like we saw this big call buying and VXX call buying. One of the best signals for me is when we see VXX put buying when the market's weak. That's telling me there's a high probability squeeze right around the corner. You know, smart money is aggressively betting against volatility. So, you know, those, those are the things I look for, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, throughout the day and flow. Sometimes there's nothing there. You know, sometimes there's nothing there to take out of flow, and that's when you sit. For me, I sit on my hands and do nothing. Like, uh, for example, unless we are in a full-fledged bear market um, and there are zero opportunities on the long side, I don't fool around on the short side. We went through this last week. So on a day like Thursday, where the markets continue to sell and there's nothing but put buying out there, what do you think I'm doing? I'm sitting here waiting for the flow to flip. Right? I'm looking and sitting here waiting for the smart money to start looking to get long the market. They didn't. Okay, they really didn't at any point Thursday. So what I do Thursday? Nothing. Zero. I didn't say, oh, uh, maybe I should just short then because I got nothing to do on the long side. No. You know, it keeps me in check. And that's how I know flow works for me because on days I should be doing nothing, I did nothing. If I, for me personally, if I didn't use flow as an indicator, I'd be out there like a drunken cowboy. God knows what I'd be doing. You know, buying a dip, shorting this, buying that. So it's it's like you said, it's a map. It's my it's my guide. But not every day, not all the time, is there something to take out of the flow that's actionable. You know, sometimes the actionable play or flow is to do nothing. It's okay to do nothing. A lot of traders don't realize that. You know, and as we head into a tricky time of the year here, it's okay to stay light and do nothing. You don't have to be a hero. That, and that's what I try to stress. Like, even where we are now, okay, let's say, I'll give you an example, okay, because we got actually perfect timing here as we head into next week. If Monday the markets are down, all right, and we have sentiment scream to the upside, Okay, I think we should be looking to make a playoff weakness anyway, but I'm I'm just painting the picture. Markets are down Monday, put the call soaring higher. Okay, all the sentiment stuff I look at is signaling um look for an entry. You know, I start to see some call buying coming in. As a swing trader, I don't need to go ballistic. I'll make a play on spy. You know, I'll make a play on spy betting on a squeeze. I don't have to go crazy there, knowing that this could be a, a, a rough time during the year. You know what I mean? So I take it nice and easy. And that's okay to do. That's okay to do. So, but that's, that, by the way, that's the setup we have going into next week. If we have Monday some weakness, um, as a day trader, any green that, in other words, if there's, Call buying that comes in Monday, I'm I'm gonna be playing. 
as opposed to if sentiment was on the other side, right? Let's say sentiment wasn't all bared up. Then, you know, I would be on the cautious side. And the reason being, there's logic behind it, guys. The, the reason being is if everybody is betting on downside, okay, like I told you earlier, that it doesn't tell me that there's not a chance of downside Monday, but that tells me the likelihood of a squeeze off that downside is high. That's, that's how I look at it. Yeah, so David, you're asking, how do we know a bull trap or a bear trap on options um, like LB August 18 puts? 33 volume OI was the same setup similar this week with JC Penny calls. Uh, yeah, because David, I just mentioned it um, a second ago with the retail names. You have earnings. You know what I mean? That, and it doesn't make sense, right? Like, look, I just mentioned to you, J.C. Penny. Let's like take a look at J.C. Penny. Okay, so J.C. Penny doesn't catch any sort of flow anywhere. Okay, the stock was rallying, blah blah blah, but you know, never caught any flow. All of a sudden, J.C. Penny, right before earnings, see some call buying. Okay, now we know this thing has been demolished on the downside. We know shorts have made a kill in this thing. So the likelihood that if somebody short JC Penny and is worried about a squeeze off a number that maybe is not as bad as the street expected, what's the easiest way to protect against that? Buy calls. Okay? And you heard me make the point, David, like in bull markets, you're going to see put buying. You're going to see put buying. That's not bearish. Some of the biggest bulls out there will buy puts because they're all in on the long side and they're buying spy puts to protect against any downside. So just like I ignore puts in a bull market, I, I me personally, I ignore the majority of any earnings flow out there because there's a high probability that it's not betting on a direction. It's hedging. Okay, so now here's the thing. If J.C. Penny, which you mentioned, right, David, caught call buying, okay, if that was legitimate call buying and this happened, they'd be all over this, wouldn't they? Right? If they like J.C. Penny here going into the quarter and this thing just shit its pants, wouldn't they gobble this up as an opportunity? But meanwhile, I'm seeing J.C. Penny put buying. I saw J.C. Penny put buying. So that's that's what you got to understand. You know, there's again, we never know for sure the true intent behind any of these bets. Okay, we never know for sure. But we know there's a high probability of stock replacement, protection, hedging into earnings. So you want to try to avoid that period of time. So that's that's the only thing you can do. And again, you know, you hear me say all the time, one order can mean anything, right? One call buyer can mean anything. Could mean anything. Could be protection, could be hedging, could be a fat finger, God knows. It could mean anything. But when they show that aggressive nature, okay, where they keep coming after a name continuously, in my opinion, that shows one thing. That they want to be long the name. So when I see that aggressive nature, and the flow is impressive. In other words, they're not buying uh, five cent calls. They're laying wood. They're going deep in the money. They're not afraid to lay uh, some premium out there. They're not afraid to have money at risk. When I see aggressive nature behind that type of flow, that's that's the goods out there. That's the stuff 
you want to try to take advantage of. All right, the last one, basically, well, the Procter & Gamble had that, but the last one that really fit that was like the COL. It doesn't mean they have to catch news all the time, but we see speculative type action all day long. All right, we talked uh, a little earlier about trip. Put a couple of lotto bets on Friday, cheap ones, peanuts. Okay, what was different about COL and a trip? COL had that aggressive nature where they kept coming throughout the day, but more importantly, they had there was one sweep in there where they went deep in the money and laid some premium. You know, that showed you that the guy was real. It wasn't just spec action. He felt confident about it. You know, and at the time, you know, now we know there's a takeover there, right? UTX is looking, has already made a bid for COL. At that time, when the action was coming in, we had no idea. You know, we're thinking, oh, maybe he's just bullish on, um, you know, the war stuff and the defense names. Uh, but the reason we saw that sharp sweep around all the other order flow that was there, and there was a lot of order flow there, you know, it signals that um, the guy's for real. So, and you, you hear me say that all the time. It's the goods. Everything else, in my opinion, is is just a trade. I mean, in reality, you should look at everything as a trade because you, the losers are normal. You know, losers are normal. But anything else that catches just some activity, is just a, it's just a trade. You like it, you take a shot. It goes down, it goes down. You know, but the... The nucleus of flow, like the, the edge and flow, is off the stuff like this. You don't get it all the time. That's part of the problem. But that's what, you know, uh, myself and Ani were talking about at the start of the webinar. Uh, the tough part sitting around waiting for the goods to come around. You know, where things line up. Maybe it's technicals for you, too. You know, for me, it's not. But maybe for you guys, it's that aggressive flow and for the stock to look a certain way on a, on a chart. But again, it's the patience of letting things set up for you. That's the, that's the main purpose. If you could do that um, and try to get better at that, uh, you'd be okay. Uh, yeah, Johnny's mentioning Skechers. What do you got, a chart there? I don't I can't click on that. Can I? Let me see. Now, I can't click on that. I can try to copy the link and take a look. Um, but, yeah, Sketches again, has been some of the better flow we have been seeing. Okay, it's not in the COL category. Um, but, you know, again, numerous, more than just one buyer. And um, the flow has been clean. But you can see it looks, looks good, Sketches. looks good. And they've had success in this name before, you know. Um, again, similar to that, GIII had a nice little push. Now you're getting close to earnings here, uh, and it's breathing. But I wouldn't fool around with it into earnings. We'll see. See, like this GIII, the best case scenario, um, earnings come out, and the stock maybe is off a little bit, doesn't do much, preferably even off a little bit, back down to where near the uh, action started heating up. Uh, I haven't seen any recent action last week. Uh, but then post-earnings, they come after it again. Yeah, and that would signal that there's something bigger at play here. You know, but that had multiple buyers and um, had a nice little tradable grind out of it. That's all. All right, anybody have any questions before we uh, wrap it up here? Everybody good? All right, so next week, listen, like I said, you don't try to be a hero um, no matter what. You know, you, you take it easy. Um, you look to buy something into weakness, especially when people are getting all wrapped up on the bear side and it looks like nuclear war. The, the more you're looking out of a squeeze or a name, just make sure you have enough time. So if you're early, 
Okay, and and that's the one thing I because I didn't touch on that earlier, right? So in other words, let's say you bought um, this pullback here, okay, and this squeeze wasn't enough for you, right? We spoke about that last week. This pullback, people were extremely bearish into that selling. Okay, you put something on, you didn't take this squeeze, and now you got caught in this. If you need more than this, or you're looking for more than this, just make sure you give yourself enough time. Otherwise, you're trading like you have a crystal ball with options, and that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, Jordan, again, I'm not trying to predict things because I know it's a losing proposition. I just know. Don't ask me why. Maybe the markets are rigged for all I know. But all I know, I wish I had that chart. When I find it, I'll post it on Twitter again. Seasonally, this time of year into September is the single worst time to own stocks. Can it be different this time? Of course. But seasonally, going into this time of the year, it is the worst time to be long equities. Every major debacle that we've seen throughout history, nine out of ten of them have come in this period of time. You know, maybe you know the big shots come back from their Hamptons parties and are back trading again and you know start to realize things they were ignoring and that creates the volatility who knows who knows but you know whether it's government shutdown 9-11 the asian contagion you name it they all happen around this time of the year so that's why you just you know like i said when i was managing money i couldn't be as nimble i uh, october october into like mid-October, it depends. If we get started early, like if we got started now, Chuck, we could start rallying early October. You know, let's say if this correction starts now, October is notorious, notoriously known for bottoms. At the end of October, usually we've bottomed out. The bottom has started. You know, like going into the end of the year is actually a good time to be long equity, usually, especially if you get a correction um, around this time. If you get a correction, usually, you know, end of October, November, December, that's when you get a nice little rally and you get some nice setups out of a, a pullback. So that's what I'm saying. The pullbacks aren't bad. The, the, a pullback here would be the best thing for this market. I hope we get it. There'll be a lot, you know, you can look at things and see some upside again. You know, now it, it's just tough to see, you know, further upside without a lot of risk here. It's just tough to see it here. When charts look like this. At some point in time, there's going to be some sort of breathing. You know, so the ideal scenario is we, we get out of um, earnings season, you know, at least chop around some consolidation at the least. At the least. And then we can start a, a whole new leg higher. Um because again, not every, it doesn't just because we pull back doesn't mean it's Armageddon. Everybody thinks, everybody looks at 2008. 2008 has scarred people, and for good reason. If we experience something worse than 2008, your brokerage account is the least of your worries. Trust me. Okay? Trust me. 2008, I was pulling my money out of the bank because I was worrying about the money in my savings in the bank. So, the stock market don't even worry about it if it's going to be worse than 2008. So I wouldn't plan on that. But corrections can get vicious. They can get scary. And we haven't seen one yet. So don't tell me we have just saw one. We haven't seen one. The closest to any real pull was 2011. We haven't seen one since, in my opinion. So when we see one, it's going to feel like the end of the world. 
but ultimately that's going to set up uh, an unbelievable opportunity. Unbelievable opportunity. Uh, Brent, I mentioned it earlier. I don't know if you were around on the NCLH. Um, that was some of the better activity Friday. Uh, I It's a trade at the least. You know, uh, a couple guys day traded in the room, had a nice move. The only thing I would say is that it's, you know, it's not initial activity, Brent. They've been doing this on every dip this whole way up. You know, one of these dips are going to end up, you know, you're going to see a bounce, and if the market rolls over, it's going to roll over with the market. But they, they hit this dip. They hit this breather. They hit this dip. They hit this dip. They hit this dip. This NCLH has been their favorite cruise name for a while now. You know, so I like the action into the weakness off the secondary news. Um, it was legit buying. So, like I said, you make you know for a trade, but it's not. It's you're not going to get me all excited about it because it's not the first time we're seeing this in NCLH. Uh, that's the only thing you know I would add there. Again, if it was initial activity, you know that could be something different. But um, it's far from it. Yeah, no problem. I just wanted to make sure you. Uh, I repeated what I said earlier, so you know my feeling on it. But yeah, it was you know legitimate Friday, a uh, legitimate buying Friday into weakness. All right, boys and girls, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out. Yep, four oh five. We got a ball game. Um, Home Depot saw some mixed action. Home Depot a little bit of protection on the put side as well. Um, but again, you got earnings there, so I wouldn't make too much out of that. You know, earnings flow. All right, guys. Um, I'll talk to you during the week. Again, just be on the cautious side, nice and easy. Uh, you can still get a trade out of weakness, I think, early in the week if we get it. Uh, but just try not to get too greedy, and um, you know, stay nice and easy. That's all. So just in case you're wrong, you don't get killed. Be good, guys. Enjoy the week. I'll talk to you during the week.